So one of the challenges of creating a blended ecology of church, where we have these little new Christian communities, these churches in the wild, living in a symbiotic relationship with the inherited church, is many times people in the inherited church don't necessarily have an imagination uh, for these little kind of contextual communities. And so over the course of a decade now, I still hear frequently from my leaders, well, pastor, that's great what you're doing in that tattoo parlor or that burrito joint or that dog park or that running track or that library. But when are those people going to come here to real church, right? And so one of those people was my church council chair. Her name is Sandra Torsha. And when we first arrived in Wildwood over 10 years ago, and we started to do these crazy little experiments of new Christian communities, Sandra did not understand what we were doing with Tattoo Parlor Church. She said, Pastor, she said things like, we are paying you to go into a tattoo parlor. What, what is going on? Do you know what the Bible says about that? And so we had all kind of really in-depth conversations. But Sandra was the church council chair, and she was the matriarch of that community, of the Wildwood Church. And so people looked up to her. They respected her. You know, there's the appointed leader and the leader with the title, and then there's the real leader, right? And in the Methodist context, a lot of times that's the United Methodist Women. And so Sandra was part of that group and part of that community. And so we invited Sandra to come and experience Tattoo Parlor Church for herself. And reluctantly, she showed up at one of our gatherings and she walked into the room and saw a bunch of um, Gen Z's and millennials sitting around cross-legged on the floor of a tattoo parlor on a coffee table with communion elements. And she leaned into the conversations about Jesus, about prayer, about the challenges and struggles of life, about the mountains and valleys of this community, authentically sharing with each other and finding healing together. And Sandra was overcome by the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit. And she felt the risen Jesus at work right there in that tattoo parlor. And so after uh, we had a follow-up conversation and Sandra said, I understand what you mean. I understand why we're doing this. And at 78 years old, Miss Sandra Torsha, while this was not the intention, got her first tattoo right on her forearm, a cross in flame to represent her Methodist faith. And she went back to the community, the wild ones, and she began to tell them, look, this is church. This is really happening. There's young people. They're being baptized. They're taking communion. They're having conversations about Jesus. They're praying together. We need to allow this. We need to support this. We need to pray for this. And Sandra, being a key leader within the wild ones congregation, really helped that congregation embrace this change and embrace this way of being church and really live into a blended ecology. Now, 10 years later, the wild ones celebrate and say, look at all the things that our church does. They brag and tell their friends and their loved ones and their family members, yeah, we have that church in a tattoo parlor and that church in a dog park. And we've been really intentional about helping the congregation understand that their faithfulness, their prayers, presence, gifts, service, witness is enabling these little Christian communities to kind of spring up and spread all over the place. And they are part of those churches as well. And so I believe that when we create this blended ecology of church, that there'll be challenges and struggles and there'll be a battle of mental models. But if we can help the whole church understand that the focus of these communities is to reach out in loving mission to the world and help people experience the good news of Jesus Christ, then we can see churches thrive and come alive in new ways.